what's up and welcome back to the channel especially my people you know who i'm talking about those of us in the rural internet struggle now this video is going to be about the basics of setting up your home with lte internet i'm going to use my experience for the past year and a half of having this internet to hopefully help those of you that are still stuck with dsl or satellite as your only internet options jump into the 21st century and get some decent internet speed I'm going to give step-by-step -step instructions based on my experience and research, share with you some of the resources that I use to get set up, some of them I still use today to improve my setup. And guys, this is free information. So if you got any questions, leave them down below. I'll try to answer them. If you have any information to offer, maybe your setup is better, maybe you know something that works, leave a comment down below. Share this information, guys. We're just trying to help each other out. That's what this channel is all about. And as always, I encourage you to do your own research, fine tune your own internet experience, as LTE is unique to all of us. And if you're new here, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button or leave a comment down below. I really appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. Now step one is gonna be determining what kind of cell service you have at your home, which carriers you have available to you. Now there are four cellular carriers or four cellular networks. Soon to be three once they iron out the details of that merger. Right now there's four, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint. Of those four carriers, you may have one, you may have two, you may have all four available to you. If you do, God bless you. In my situation, I have two available to me. Your job is to determine what kind of service, which carriers are available to you, and which of these carriers provide you the best service at your home. Then figure out where in your home you get the strongest signal. There are a couple of resources that I've used to help figure this out, and I recommend if you have an Android, to download Network Cell, Info Light, and Speed Test by Ookla. And if you have an Apple, I recommend you download Open Signal and Speed Test by Ookla. Now this is cell info light and these are the numbers that you're going to look at to determine your signal strength and this this number is your signal quality you notice the band that we're on and the carrier using these apps together can help you figure out both your signal strength and your data speeds or at least give you a rough estimate of it because remember the modem in your cell phone may be different from the modem in your hotspot or your cellular router now, if you have a weak cell signal or no cell signal at all at your house, you're going to have to go to cellmapper.net. This website is going to help you locate your closest cell tower. It's going to tell you which direction it is in relation to your house, and it's going to tell you which carriers are available and the signal strength that it puts out. This is going to help you in setting up external antennas. Now, for LTE speeds, you need at least two external antennas configured a certain way so you can get MIMO, which is called multi-in, multi-out. This is necessary for you to grab an LTE signal and to have data coming in. Now I set up a couple of Yagi antennas on my roof for LTE. I'll show you my setup real quick. Okay, this is the front of my house and up there on the very top on the roof. I'm gonna zoom in, you can see my antenna set up. Those are my two Yagi antennas. Let's jump on the roof and take a closer look. Okay, so you see I got my antennas set up at 45 degree angles opposite of each other. They're polarized. This is the way it's supposed to be set up to receive an LTE signal. I have them pointing in the direction of the cell tower. You see on the back I got some heavy duty LMR 400 coax that feeds to my MoFi. But keep in mind, for me, this is a luxury, not a necessity, because I'm about a mile away from the tower. And truth be told, my devices perform just as well with its internal antennas as they do when I have them connected to my external antennas. So it really doesn't make much of a difference for me. For those of you who need antennas to get a decent signal or to amplify your signal at your house, I suggest you go to a channel by a guy named John Barth. He's been up on his roof experimenting with different antennas and different configurations. I find his channel to be very informative, very helpful, especially for those of you 
that are in the boat where they need antennas just to get a decent signal. So I do recommend going over to his channel and checking out his videos because for him, these antennas were something that he needed. For me, it was more of a luxury slash experiment. I did also experiment with some cellular boosters and I can tell you right now, I wouldn't recommend them for anybody that wants to improve their signal for LTE data. Now the boosters are useful if you have a weak signal and you want to improve it for regular cell phone calls or text messages. They do make your signal stronger. However, for LTE data, I found them to be not useful. In fact, in some cases, they cut my download speeds in half. What I found was that they amplified the signal and also the noise on the signal. In LTE data, more specifically your download speeds, is directly connected to the quality of the cell signal you get. Not just the strength of the cell signal, but the quality of the cell signal. And what these boosters do is amplify everything, including the noise. So now that you figured out your signal strength and which carrier you're going to use, it's time to move on to step two. Step two is easily the most challenging yet most important part of this process. You have to get a SIM card activated with an unlimited data plan. This is the key to having LTE for your home internet. Now you can get an unlimited data plan directly from the carriers, but keep in mind most of these unlimited data plans that the carriers offer are designed for on phone usage. So when you take the SIM card out of the phone and try to swap it into a hotspot or a cellular router, the data is automatically throttled down to a half a meg. Now the reason this happens is because the cellular carriers measure data in two ways. Streaming data, which is considered on phone usage, and tethered data, which is considered hotspot usage where they can tell if a device is connected to the phone to use the LTE or the internet. A lot of times you put this directly into a hotspot or a router, it comes up as tethered data. Also, the carriers can see the IMEI number that's on the device, and if it doesn't match the phone or if it matches that that they have flagged as a hotspot or a cellular router, they will automatically throttle that speed. Now there are workarounds around this, but they don't always work. So keep in mind when selecting an unlimited data plan that there are some risk factors in this if you're gonna get a cell phone plan. I suggest that you keep looking for unlimited data plan that's designed for a hotspot or a cellular router or has unlimited hotspot data. Remember to do your research and read the fine print. There are so-called unlimited data plans out there that give you a certain amount of LTE data to use. And once you exceed that limit, they throttle you down to 3G speeds for the rest of the billing cycle. So they give you unlimited data, but not unlimited LTE data. There are other plans, however, that give you a certain amount of LTE data to use before you get deprioritized. Now, deprioritization is different from being throttled. When you deprioritize, that just means that you get put to a lower priority on that cellular tower if it's congested. Now, in a rural area, nine times out of 10, you won't notice any change in your speed. And even if you did, you get slowed down to a slower LTE speed, not a 3G speed, which is still usable for home internet. Okay, well, so check I this out. Now, first of all, you throwing too many big words at me, okay? Now, because I don't understand them, I'm gonna take them as disrespect. Watch your mouth and help me with this. Also, there are third-party companies that sell their own unlimited data plans using the carrier's cellular networks. There's Metro PCS, they use the T-Mobile network. There's Cricket Wireless, they use the AT&T network. A popular one right now is Visible, which uses the Verizon network. And Visible has a plan that includes unlimited hotspot data. However, it's designed for a phone and only allows you to connect one device to the phone at one time. These third-party unlimited data plans are almost always deprioritized, and most of them are designed for phone usage. So you may have to get a little creative in finding workarounds to get this SIM to work in a hotspot or a cellular router. Now, if the idea of doing some research and getting creative and finding workarounds to get a data plan directly from the carrier or directly from a third-party vendor, it seems like it's a bit much or daunting to you, there is another option. There are resellers. Now what resellers do is basically get data plans directly from the carrier or they have data plans that are grandfathered in directly from the carrier and they resell it to you for a marked up price. Now some of these resellers are legitimate alternatives to people looking for an unlimited data plan to use for a hotspot or a cellular router. But some of them are just plain ripoffs. 
The prices are marked up so high that it's just ridiculous. In some cases, you'll be paying five to six times more than it would cost you just to get the plan directly from the carrier. And a lot of these resellers only use one carrier, some may use two, but if those carriers aren't available in your area, they won't do you any good anyway. I'll give you a list of the resellers that I know that are still actively taking customers, and I'll put them in the description below. When shopping for a data plan, one resource I recommend is the Mobile Internet Resource Center. It's both a YouTube channel and a website. They do a great job and they keep an updated list of the data plans that are offered by the carrier along with the description and the price of each plan. So in a nutshell, for step two, you got to do some homework. You got to do some research. One quick note on getting an unlimited data plan directly from the carrier. From my research, I've noticed that if you have a postpaid plan, usually those are more forgiving and allowing you to swap the SIM from the phone to the hotspot and keep your LTE speeds. But also remember that there's a chance that the carrier can detect that you're using that SIM card in a hotspot, not a phone, and stop your data altogether. So now that you've optimized the cell service that you got coming to your house, you pick the carrier that you're gonna use, and you got a SIM card activated with an unlimited data plan, that was the fun part. Pick which device you're gonna use as your cellular modem. Come here, I'll show you how it works. All right. Now in my year and a half of using LTE for internet, I've used four devices. Well, three and two versions of one device. The first device that I started out with was the Netgear LB1120. For 120 to 130 bucks, you can get this off of Amazon and it pretty much does the job. It just doesn't have the bells and whistles or allow for the configurations that the more high-end devices allow you to do. Of course, with this modem, you need a router to hook up to it as it has an ethernet port, but it doesn't give off any Wi-Fi signal. I reviewed this in my last video, so I won't go into too much detail. For the price, it's a cellular modem that just works. The next device I tried is the Netgear Nighthawk M1. Now this is the unlocked version. Now this is a higher end cellular modem than the LB1120, as the LB1120 is a category four. This is a category 16 modem. This also has a router function and gives off Wi-Fi on both the 2.4 and the five gigahertz frequencies. So in essence, you can just use this device as a home internet solution, no need to have another router. However, from my experience, I found that this works best when used as a cellular modem with another router attached to it through the ethernet port. Also, it can be used as a hotspot as it has a battery. You can take it with you on the go and use it wherever you want to. If you're gonna use it as a home internet solution, I recommend taking out the battery and getting a two amp charging block so you can power up the device without the battery inside of it. As the charging block that comes with it is only sufficient for charging the battery and won't keep it powered without the battery in it. This device gets great speeds. It has carrier aggregation and with a little hacking, you can edit the band list and lock it to one band if you choose. You can change the IMEI number. If it's a locked AT&T version, you can unlock it. This is a powerful little box with a lot of functionality and with some tweaking, you can really push it to the limits. It's a lot more pricier than the LB1120 because it comes in at about $300. I got mine for $250, but nowadays you'd be lucky if you can find one for $300. A lot of them are going for $350 and $399, especially the unlocked versions. But if you can find one for $300, grab it up. The next device I tried is the Mo5 4500. Now this product is probably the most popular among people that use LTE for home internet solution. This product's been around for a while, but it's retained its popularity because it's an easy to use interface. It comes ready plug and play, yet it's extremely customizable. Once you get on the interface, you can configure it to maximize your cellular signal. It has carrier aggregation and you can lock it to bands. Now I've used two versions of it, the SIM 4 and the SIM 7. The SIM 4 is a category six modem with carrier aggregation. The SIM 7 has a category four modem with no carrier aggregation. However, the SIM 7 does have a couple of bands that the SIM 4 does not. And this is the reason I tried the SIM 7. The SIM 7 has band 66 and band 71. If you have T-Mobile or Verizon and you have those bands available in your area, you may want to try a SIM 7. With the SIM 7, I was able to use an unlimited prepaid Verizon SIM card in there and it worked. Whereas it didn't work in the SIM 4, it was automatically throttled down to a half a meg. Other than that, I didn't notice much difference in performance. But with that being said, I recommend you get the SIM 4 version because it's tried and true carrier aggregation. Like the Nighthawk, this is also a Wi-Fi router 
but unlike the Nighthawk, it just has the 2.4 frequency for its Wi-Fi, not the 5 gigahertz. You can find it on Amazon and go directly to the MoFi network and order it from them. This device costs about $330. It's a great device. I found that from my experience, even though these two can be used as Wi-Fi routers along with cellular modems, if I allow them to just be cellular modems, they perform better and I use a separate router or a Wi-Fi access point to handle my Wi-Fi. Now obviously there are many more cell modems and routers to choose from. So if you use something different, leave a comment down below. Let me know what it is and how it works for you. Well by now, you've optimized your cell signal, you've chosen a carrier, you've gotten a SIM card activated with an unlimited data plan, and you've chosen a device. Nothing left to do but to put that SIM card in the device, turn it on, and enjoy your fast rural internet. You can do it! To sum it up, if you live in a rural area, Using LTE for home internet is not only a better performing option, in a lot of cases it's also cheaper. I have two data plans and I still pay less than I did when I had satellite internet. Follow these steps and you too could set your home up with better, faster, and possibly cheaper internet. I'm gonna go do it! Yeah! Thanks for watching and have a good one. Thank you, you've been helpful.